again and welcome back and I'd like to introduce you to our next speaker, Dee Lauder, who's going to talk about um, 900 years of history, 20 years of IPM in practice at Elton Palace. Over to you, Dee. Thank you very much. Elton Palace has a long history. First recorded in the Doomsday Book, the estate was presented to Edward II in 1305. By the mid-1400s, it had developed into a luxurious royal residence and nursery. Henry VIII grew up here with his brothers and sisters, and the palace was often used for Christmas court celebrations. Extensive rebuilding of nearby Greenwich Palace meant that the palace gradually became less frequented. It was mainly used for hunting purposes. By 1660, the palace was practically in ruins, and only Edward IV's Great Hall, with its adjacent courthouse or buttery, some fragments of other buildings, and the 15th century bridge crossing the moat survived. The current house was built in the 1930s on the site of the original palace and incorporated the Great Hall, which is the third largest hammer beam roof in England. It is an iconic 20th century Art Deco resident, renovated by Stephen and Virginia Courthold. English Heritage took the property into its care in the 1990s, and insect pest trapping as part of an IPM programme was introduced in the property has been continuously monitored by trained English heritage staff since then. During this presentation, I shall be using the common names of the insect pests. However, their common and Latin names are given in our paper and on some of the slides. When trapping started at Eltham in 2001, the first insect pests mainly found on traps were varied carpet beetle, adults and larva, two spot carpet beetles and larva, book lice and silverfish. Case bearing and webbing clothes moths were not detected here until 2008. In the last 20 years, a wide range of pests have been found, mostly in low pests. They include all of the species on the English Heritage Monitoring Sheet, with the exception of Golden Spider Beetle. And these can be seen in the full list in our paper. Since 2001, a number of new species appeared at Elton Palace. Adult clothes moths were not trapped until 2008, and this was only in low numbers. The story of the increase of webbing is featured later in this presentation. Guernsey carpet beetles were first found in 2012, but have not increased in numbers since then. The pale back clothes moth was first found on webbing clothes moth pheromone traps in 2015. This species is known to originate from birds' nests, but is regularly attracted to the pheromone lure traps in houses. It is not yet clear if this species can attract, can attack dry woolen textiles and numbers remain lower Elton. The most interesting transition has been with carpet beetles. Initially, the main insect pest species caught on traps were varied carpet beetle adults and larvae. These species continued to be found on traps, but in lower numbers since 2011, due to the regular deep cleaning of vulnerable textiles and targeted housekeeping measures being deployed. With the help of the property-based staff, this regime has prevented damage to the collections. However, in the last two years, staffing issues and the COVID-19 pandemic have caused a problem with this being maintained, and the number of insects trapped has started to rise again. The results from traps in 2021 will indicate whether the population has remained high and will need remedial action. Early trapping records also record two spot carpet beetle adults. The number found on traps have declined gradually since then, probably due to the cleaning of fireplace flues which could be accessed. However, in 2017, we noticed that some of the lava appeared to be a lighter brown in colour than the usual ones. Knowing of the recent spread of vodka beetle in London, our suspicions were raised that these larvae might be this species. As the larvae of the two species are extremely difficult to distinguish, staff at Elton were alerted to look for adult beetles. And in 2018, the presence of vodka beetle was confirmed with the discovery of some of them on traps. It now seems at Elton that this species has replaced the two spot carpet beetle, perhaps an indicator of climate change. Since trapping started in 2001, large numbers of silverfish have been found on traps in the Great Hall. This has a stone floor with many damp microenvironments, but with very few vulnerable objects in the area, it was considered that silverfish did not present a serious risk. 
Then in 2011, 1,290 were found on the hall and in other places in the house. This problem now needed to be thoroughly investigated with remedial action being undertaken. The main concern from the increase was initially the additional numbers of silverfish caught on traps, mainly on the ground floor of the house. However, a continuing problem with damp ingress on both floors and the deployment of additional sticky blunder traps showed that most of the silverfish caught were on traps placed near windows and outside walls, and some also being found in fireplaces. The site's technical manager was notified and asked to investigate the damp ingress problem. Pointing works around the window areas on the first floor south side were also carried out in 2012 to resolve the problem following an investigation. During our site visit, we also discovered that the bottom section in this area have been stolen and these were temporarily replaced and new lead pipes were installed in 2012. Block drains were also found and subsequently cleared of all debris. The water ingress was the cause of the high humidity micro environments and because our site visits and the IPM trapping program gave clear early warning of damp related issues through the insect pests being recorded this was rectified by the building work and maintenance, so avoiding any further costly damage. Webbing clothes moths were not detected in the property until 2008. In 2009, Kilgerm AF pheromone lure ball traps were deployed to monitor this new threat to the collections. The number of moths on traps gradually increased until 2016, the rapid expansion of the population. A key objective since then has been to identify the source of the moths and prevent damage to vulnerable and historic textile collections. The point was in the boudoir and the adjacent library rooms. A number of objects, including the furniture, were treated using constraint, a pyrethroid microemulsion spray, and also in a controlled humidity high temperature treatment chamber owned by Integrated Contaminated Management. That's ICM UK. Other measures undertaken were open fireplaces as well as treating inaccessible wall voids found behind the false wall panels using VASA DE desiccant dust. I've mentioned these products that we use at English Heritage, but there are other similar products available as well. Desiccant dust was used to treat behind the bookcase in the library with the help of plastic straws used to create a fine long enough nozzle for deploying a fine mist of dust down there without otherwise having to spray down an excessive amount from higher up. And here you can see a webbing clothes moth emerging from the void behind the bookcase in the library before this treatment was carried out. Further deployment of kill germ pheromone lures was used in the targeted grid and it also enabled a more detailed mapping of the moths. And as a result, recent evidence indicates that the closed moth population is successfully breeding in debris and inacc inaccessible voids, such as behind the various false panelled void areas in the boudoir and library rooms. And also from under the floorboards in the main corridor outside these rooms. <coughs> under this floor heating is fitted directly below these floorboards and covered in insulation. And the pipes are also very close to the underside of the floorboards and lead up into wall voids. This means that all of the voids found here, where we know the moths are thriving, cannot be accessed or treated without the total removal of all the heating pipes. There are also other various wall voids connecting throughout the property, such as this circle, which runs up through the floors of the main house. The moths have now spread around the house, probably as a interconnecting voids and are now well established. The key challenge faced is the difficulty of keeping out effective deep, carrying out effective deep cleaning and housekeeping schedules in a historic structure such as this one. It has so many inaccessible areas, which means cleaning and treatments cannot always be carried out. And unfortunately, these areas are also untreatable with any insecticide which is registered for use. However, it is possible that some other voids can be treated with the desiccant dust, although this has also proved difficult on occasions. Pigeons and other birds nesting on in large numbers were also contributing to the insect pest problems. A trial of the bird-free deterrent was carried out by an outside contractor, 
but we found that although this was initially successful on the south elevation where the largest numbers were evident, the birds just simply relocated to other areas. The deployment of a handler with a Harris hawk in 2014 has proved more successful at keeping the roosting bird numbers down and so this service has been retained. A regular cleaning program targeting removal of bird guano and debris has also been undertaken here since 2011. Additional problems have been caused in 2020 and 2021 by the restrictions in staff access and movement during the COVID-19 pandemic. The long-term effects of this on pests may be seen in the future at Elton Palace and also other English heritage properties. Due to the early warning signs from insect pests established through the trapping programme, the vigilance of the staff and the high standards of housekeeping in the visitor areas, any damage to collections by the clothes moths and other insect pests have remained low. But it will need continuing high levels of housekeeping to prevent damage in the future and to maintain this standard, it has been made a priority that extra resources are made available when required. The additional benefit of having trained staff carrying out localised treatment, such as treating carpets and rugs with constraint as seen in these images, also contributes to keeping these costs cost low for English heritage. The priority of the IPM programme has been to identify insect pest sources, assess their risks and to take early action to ensure that the objects kept here are not damaged. This has proved successful at El Elton, and the IPM programme serves as a model for other historic properties. However, it must be recognised that this is a permanent process requiring resources such as regular input from highly trained staff. Combined with regular checks and deep cleaning of the textiles and furniture so that they can be treated as soon as a problem is found. Our territory conservator is seen here preparing the sofa for heat treatment, which will penetrate deep into the sofa and kill off the infestation. The sofa can then be put straight back onto display without the need to quarantine. The general lesson to be learned from this case study is that we sometimes have to learn to live with insect pests, but with our highly developed training skills in insect pest ID, the ability to carry out in-house treatments and ongoing vigilance, we can restrict and manage the risk those by them. Here you can see the sofa has been heat treated, thoroughly checked and cleaned by our collections conservation staff and is now ready to go back on display. The IPM trapping program helps by giving us clear and early warnings of building maintenance issues, helping to avoid major building works. Regular communication with our estates and buildings maintenance staff helps us to highlight these problems so that they can take early action and make good issues such as leaking or missing downpipes, broken or blocked guttering and drains, damp ingress problems, as highlighted in this presentation in our paper. So to recap, regular training, deep cleans, day-to-day -day housekeeping measures, organised with the additional help of site-based staff and volunteers, helps to keep the risk of damage to the objects housed here to an absolute minimum. It's very popular with visitors and brings much enjoyment to them from the house as well as the grounds. It is also frequently used by major TV and film companies and for public functions such as weddings and parties. This brings in much needed resources to our charity, which helps towards the staffing, the running of the property and its continual maintenance. Lastly, and very importantly, I am absolutely indebted to the site-based staff at English Heritage who helped me with the established IPM trapping programme here by providing the accurate and much needed data since 2001. Without it, we wouldn't have become aware of the problems as highlighted here until likely irreparable damage has been caused to both the building and the historic collections. Thank you. Thank you, Dee, for a, a really quick run through 20 years of IPM, and I hope you'll be able to join us at the Q&A. Um, there's just going to be a little minute or two break, and then we'll be heading off uh, to speak with Rika um, in about two minutes' time. So thank you. <laughs>